This is really interesting. This is really interesting. What we see as indelible traits may not may be no more than habitual defensive techniques unconsciously adopted. <gasps> hmm. A lot of people, what you see, uh, uh, what you see at at people is just coping mechanisms. They they learn as children. It's really hard to um, to get away from them. Hmm. Not one of the many adults interviewed for this book could answer in the affirmative when asked the following: When, as a child, you felt sad upset or angry was there anyone you could talk to wow in a quarter century of clinical practice including a decade of palliative work i have never heard anyone with cancer or with any chronic illness or condition say yes to that question <sighs> Many children are conditioned in this manner not because of any intended harm or abuse, but because the parents themselves are too threatened by the anxiety, anger, or sadness they sense in their child. This shows that trauma is generational. Parents who treat their kids badly on an emotional level or are just not there it happened to them too because maybe those their parents as well um, behaved in this way emotional education should be included in schools because the damage will just be passed on mm. wow Hmm. Crohn's uh, uh, disease again uh, or inflammatory bowel disease IBD, IBD is usually a disease of young people um, again a story of a woman sitting in a bad uh, marriage um, I've always compromised for him. He has been an angry person, so I was, I was intimidated. He um, humbled me in front of kids. He yelled at me. Oh, wow. Oh. It's really sad. It's really sad when I see uh, cases of women sitting in such hopeless marriages. So the inflammation of IBD is the result of disordered immune activity in the gut. Inflammation is an ingenious process invoked by the body to isolate and destroy hostile organisms or noxious particles. Hmm. This, is, this becomes a state of perpetually controlled or orchestrated inflammation. Hmm. Chronically stressful emotional patterns could induce inflammatory disease in the gut. The gut or intestinal tract is much more than an organ of digestion. It is a sensory apparatus with a nervous system of its own, intimately connected to the brain's emotional centers. Wow. For, for example, a species of New World monkey, the cotton-topped tamarind, develops ulcerative colitis and cancer of the colon when captured, uh, when captured and caged. <gasps> hmm. Really interesting. So, so even animals, even animals, uh, and and emotions. Um, are so deeply connected. Hmm. Now, you, now you can understand why it's so hard for people to heal, because these patterns have been learned in childhood, and some some people are not even aware of this. Hmm. There is a high incidence of abuse in the histories of patients with intestinal diseases and especially in those patients with IBS. Mm. 
In people who have experienced chronic stress, the prefrontal cortex remain in a state of hypervigilance on the lookout for danger. This is just stress. This is just stress. Hmm. Again, a patient telling her, telling about her relationship with her mother. It took many, many sessions to uncover the fact that this was actually a very poor quality relationship with her mother. With all her protection of me, she undermined me, she left me quite inept socially and within myself, and she didn't help me to grow up and become my own person. She kept me very immature. A lot of parents do this. Hmm. Rather than seeing the pains as a problem, perhaps they really are gut feelings that are telling you something. When you don't pay attention to emotional signals, your body says, okay, here are some physical signals for you. If you don't pay attention to them either, you are really in deep trouble. I really like this. You know, we all had it, a gut feeling about something, someone. And it's usually very good to listen to that. Just listen to your body. Hmm... There is encouraging research evidence that even uh, minimal psychological intervention can be of benefit. In one controlled study of cognitive behavioral treatment for patients with IBD, eight two-hour group treatment sessions over a three-month period led to an increase in the number of effective cognitive and behavioral strategies. Improvement continued two years after. Hmm... A patient, Fiona, decided to take the warnings of her abdominal pain to heart. She left her husband when it became clear that he was unwilling to give up his drug addiction. Uh, with her two children, she has moved to a new town and filed for divorce. She is no longer experiencing pain. Wow, so you can heal. You can heal if you get away from bad people. Mm. A talk about Alzheimer. Hmm. It turned out that those who had expressed a paucity of ideas and had used less vivid languages in their youthful memoirs were proportionally more likely to have developed clinical Alzheimer. Hmm. Being deprived, being deprived of, of expressing yourself. There is a talk about a writer, and again, his relationship with his mom. Swift's long-repressed anger toward his mother would erupt later, not only in misogynistic writings, but also in his relationships with women. Toward them, he would display cold, inexpressive anger, or even physical violence. Sexually, he was repressed. So I've, I've seen that, that men who do not express their anger towards their mothers uh, become really uh, angry and violent towards women in general. Hmm. Swift's lifelong abhorrence of intimacy and his underlying fear of emotional contact or vulnerability are the defense responses of a child deprived of emotional nurturing. Wow. So, again... I, I can see how important, how important it is, this relationship between mother and child, to be emotionally nurturing, to be emotionally okay. Again, a talk about Regan. Um, wow. Regan's mother was apparently too self-absorbed and overwhelmed by the stresses of marriage to a philandering and alcoholic husband. She was unavailable to her children, just as later Ronald Regan would be unavailable to his children. Often, the child's antidote to his anger at being ignored is to idealize his mother, which is what Regan likely did. Hmm. So, if I can't tell you how horrible and nasty you are as a mom, I will just put you on a pedestal. Mm. 
healthy expression of emotion is itself stress reducing. Mm. The life histories of all uh, the Alzheimer's patients I looked after during my years of family practice were characterized by repressed emotions. They all reported early loss or emotional deprivation in their parents' lives. Yes, it is so unfortunate. I've noticed it too at many people, but you can't help people. They have to want to help themselves. The repression of anger is a form of dissociation, a psychological process originating in childhood. In other words, the angry child got into trouble and experienced rejection. The anger and the rejection had to be deflected inside against the self in order to preserve the attachment relationship with the parent. Mm. The immune cells attack the body as if the latter were a foreign substance, just as the psychic self is attacked by inward directed approaches and anger. Mm. Wow. For anger to be deployed appropriately, the organism has to distinguish between threat and non threat. The fundamental differentiation to be made is between self and non self. If I don't know where my own boundaries begin and end, I cannot know when something potentially dangerous is intruding on them. Mm. Repressed anger will lead to disordered immunity, to inability to process and express feelings effectively, and a tendency to serve the needs of others before even considering one's own, are common patterns in people who develop chronic illness. These coping styles represent a blurring of boundaries. Yes, yes, so, so true. And again yes you can't you can't put others on the first place you have to put yourself on first place it's the most important thing hmm. another patient with a bad marriage mm. gila and a bad parents gila was brought up in the philippines her parents criticized her mercilessly. Uh, when anything went wrong, she got spanked. I had asthma, and every time I got a spanking, the asthma came. And every time I got asthma, my mom would say, Oh, that's God's punishment because you were bad. Gila's husband beat her in the early years of her marriage. Mm. Gila realized she needed to do some um, psychological work. I didn't want a third son, I wanted a husband. Wow. Another study found that increases in relationship stresses were associated with increases in joint inflammation. Yes, joints, knees, everything. It's like the body is saying to you, stop walking on this path. Hmm. Wow. As Robert spoke, I was struck by the uncanny ability of nature to teach through adult disease lesson that in a better world should be learned in childhood and in health. Negative social interaction is regulated through worsening of the disease. In other words, the flare-up of disease forced patients into avoiding stressful interaction. The body says no. Hmm. Children and infant animals have virtually no capacity for biological self-regulation. Their internal biological states depend completely on their relationship with caregiving grown-ups. 
um, independent self-regulation may not even exist in adulthood. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Parents, um, a, pa um, a researcher who looked at the interaction between parents and asthmatic children have identified characteristic patterns of insecure attachments. Asthmatic children, asthmatic children were more likely than their healthy counterparts to engage in long, escalating, mutually negative interactions with both their mothers and fathers. Their parents tended to exhibit more critical behavior toward them. Wow. Decreased airflow has also been documented when children with asthma were asked to recall incidents of intense anger or fear. So problems with breathing happens when uh, kids are overly criticized. Wow. Family systems in which children develop disease have four features in common. An enmeshment, overprotectiveness, rigidity, and lack of conflict resolution. Mm. stress stress so imagine how important it is to have the right relationship with with the partner because if you don't have the right relationship with the partner your kids uh, you will suffer too hmm Women who are more self-regulated, less emotionally dependent on a relationship that failed to work for them, had stronger immune systems. Greater differentiation means better health. The less powerful partner in any relationship will absorb a disproportionate amount of shared anxiety. Many more women than men are treated for, say, anxiety or depression. The issue is... Here is not strength, but power. That is, who is serving whose needs. Mm. What is unbalanced is the relationship, so that the women are absorbing their husband's stresses and anxieties while also having to contain their own. <gasps> the partner who must suppress more of his or her own needs for the sake of the relationship is more likely to develop physical illness as well. Hence, the greater incidence for autoimmune diseases uh, and of non-smoking-related cancer among women. Hmm. This is why picking up the right partner is so important. I think people do not realize how important the person you spend your life with uh, is. Because if, they, if you have to pick up their share of emotional work... And they just sit around and make your life miserable. You're more likely going to die <laughs> sooner than them. Hmm. If I chronically repress my emotional needs in order to make myself acceptable to other people, I increase my risks of having to pay the price in form of illness. Hmm. The, um, the more socially isolated were more susceptible to illness of many types. The more, the more socially connected a person was, the lower the risk of death. Hmm. Very interesting. So what I really like about this book is that it's not only about disease. It's about, it's about emotions. It's about this myriad of relationships that we have during our lifetime. And... It puts things into perspective. It shows you that if you take care of your needs, you will you'll most likely take care of your kids' needs and it will go further and further in generations. Hmm. Very interesting. One learns love not by instruction but by being loved. I really loved. Emotional contact is as important as physical contact. Hmm. So it's not, it's the emotional contact is really important.
Parents are the biological regulators of the child's immature uh, physiological and emotional system. Parental love is not simply a warm and pleasant emotional experience. It is a biological condition essential for healthy um, physiological and psychological development. Mm. Decades of neuroscientific research have established that an indispensable requirement of human brain development is nurturing emotional interactions with the parents. <sighs> wow. So the first two years are really important. You have to make time for the baby. In the parent-child interaction is established a child's sense of the world. Um, whether this uh, is a world of love and acceptance, a world of neglectful indifference in which one must root and scratch to have one's needs satisfied or worse a world of hostility where one must forever maintain an anxious hypervigilance future relationships will have as their templates nerve circuits laid down in our relationships with our earliest caregivers we will understand ourselves as we have felt understood love ourselves as we perceived being loved on the deepest unconscious levels care for ourselves with as much compassion as at our core we perceived as young children this is so important this is why when we see trauma when we see illness when we see bad behavior we should look beyond and we should ask ourselves what happened to that person how was their childhood mm. it's really really bad people trained in the a way in childhood are likely to choose elder relationships that reenact repeated proximate separation dynamics they may for example choose partners who do not understand accept or appreciate them for who they are they repeat they repeat what they saw in their childhood what they felt in their childhood in adulthood when the parent is not there when nobody understands when this is called like proximal proximate separation the phenomenon of physical closeness but emotional separation it's when parents are there physically but emotionally they are they are gone wow It's more important to be emotionally there than to just sit like completely absent. Mm. Maternal care in infancy influences the physiology of anxiety regulation in the brain of the adults. Anxious mothers are likely to rear anxious offsprings down through the generations. Mm. So a stressed mother will, will make the child stressed and that child won't be able to regulate his or her emotions. Um, here we come back to the attachment styles, uh, secure, anxious, wow. Mm. Wow. What an adult unconsciously reveals about his own childhood during the course of the attachment interview will predict his own attachment pattern with his children. Hmm. Wow. So you can actually predict 20 years from now how uh, uh, an adult will, will behave with his kids because it's so deeply ingrained in the childhood. Parenting, in short, is a dance of the generations. Whatever affected one generation but has not been fully resolved will be passed on to the next. This is what you should take from this book. You are, you are just putting your 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 print on on generations hmm. children who become their parents caregivers are prepared for a lifetime of repression hmm. 
We have noted that personality does not cause disease, trust does. People who exercise greater control over their work and lives enjoy better health. Learn to say no, learn to say no or or your body does it for you. Interesting uh, information that genes are turned on or off by the environment. So the environment is right, really important as well. The perceptions are programmed in our cells on the molecular level. Early experiences condition the body's stance towards the world and determine the person's unconscious beliefs about herself in relationship to the world. Dr. Lipton calls that process the biology of belief. Really interesting. Unconscious beliefs embedded at a cellular level. They control our behaviors no matter what we may think on the conscious level. Wow, this sounds like so discouraging like you are not going to be a master of your fate after all and your childhood is going to pretty much dictate uh, everything and I I don't know but it's it's definitely not not an encouraging thing at all so the battle is real the battle is real if we would heal, it is essential to begin the painfully incremental task of reversing the biology of belief we adopted very early in life. Whatever external treatment is administered, the healing agent lies within. The internal milieu must be changed to find health and to know it fully necessitates a quest, a journey to the center of our own biology of belief. So we have to change it. We have to change it. Liberation from oppressive and stressful external circumstances is essential. <sighs> to heal is to become whole. So I really like that um, there is a, a, an optimistic perspective in this book and that it, it shows you that you can change, that you have the power to override the program, the code. Um, mm. Knowledge and insight have the power to transform. Insight is more helpful to people than advice. If we gain the ability to look into ourselves with honesty, compassion, and with unclouded vision, we can identify the ways we need to take care of ourselves. We can see the areas of the self formerly hidden in the dark. Compulsive optimism is one of the ways we bind our anxiety to avoid confronting. That form of positive thinking is a coping mechanism of the hurt child. Oh. Many people are blocked from self-knowledge and personal growth by the myth they feel compelled to hold on or having had a happy childhood. Hmm. A little negative thinking would empower them to see through the self-delusion that keeps them stuck in self-harming behavioral patterns. Yes, 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 yes. I do, I do think that we need to, uh, to look at our childhoods with different eyes and be ready to admit that maybe our childhood wasn't so happy and... We have to realize that emotional scars are invisible and we had to, we have to do a lot of inner work. Hmm. Our insistent our insistent is insistently strong self image was generated to hide a weakness, the relative weakness of the child. Our fragility is nothing to be ashamed. A person can be strong and still need help, can be powerful in some areas of life and helpless and confused in others. We cannot do all that we thought we could. Hmm. 
Uh, I really love this question and you should put it to yourself. Do I live my life according to my own deepest truth or in order to fulfill someone else's expectations? How much of what I have believed and done is actually my own? And how much has been in service to a self-image I originally created in the belief it was necessary to please my parents? Hmm. A therapist once said to me, if you face the choice between feeling guilt and resentment, choose the guilt every time. Hmm. It is wisdom I have passed on to many others since. If a refusal saddles you with guilt, while consent leaves resentment in its wake, opt for the guilt. Resentment is soul suicide. Compulsive, positive thinkers are more likely to develop disease and less likely to survive. Mm. Anger. Anger is actually necessary, so being angry is nothing wrong. Mm. There are seven A's for healing. Seven things you would have to have. Acceptance. This is really important. To... to be willing to recognize and accept how things are awareness uh, to reclaim the lost capacity for emotional truth recognition awareness means also learning what the signs of stress are in our own bodies so just be aware anger yeah allow yourself to be angry um Repression and rage represent a fear of genuine experience of anger. Yeah, be angry. Be angry. Express your emotions. Um, hmm. You see, the acting out, the yelling, the screaming, and even the hitting, all that a person does serves as a defense against the experience of the anger. It's a defense against keeping the anger inside where it can be deeply felt. Discharge defense against anger being actually experienced. <gasps> wow. Wow. It's important to manifest it. Healthy anger leaves the individual, not the unbridled emotion, in charge. Autonomy. Another important thing. People suffer when their boundaries are blurred. So be autonomous. Be your own. Don't, don't, don't be a people pleaser. Attachment. Connecting is also vital. Yeah, connect with people that really are like for you. Hmm. We sometimes find it easier to feel bitterness or rage than to allow ourselves to experience that aging desire for contact that, when disappointed, originally engendered anger. Behind all our anger lies a deeply frustrated need for truly intimate contact. Connections is a necessity. Uh, seeking connections is a necessity for healing. Assertion. A, declara a declaration to ourselves and to the world that we are and that we are who we are. Just be. Just be. Affirmation. To affirm who you are. Hmm. So health rests on the three pillars, the body, the psyche, and the spiritual connection. To ignore any one of them is to invite imbalance and dis-ease. Yes. So yeah, this is it, guys. This is the book. A lovely, lovely book. I do recommend you reading it. And it will definitely surprise you. And maybe it will make you go within and analyze uh, the relationship you have with your mom, with your dad, with your sisters, with everyone, but especially with your caregivers. Just learn to say no before your body does it for you. Bye. Bye.